We are here with another Teacher of the Year profile. Right now we're visiting with Crystal Lynn Buddha, who is the Teacher of the Year for 2017 for the California Charter Schools Association. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so you teach World History and AP Psychology yes. at Futures High School. I do. And that's do. in North Highlands? Yeah, North Highlands. North Highlands. Okay. Yeah. So tell me about that combination of World History and AP Psychology. That's kind of an interesting combination. Uh, well, it's it's really great. I started off with world history, and um, world history is an amazing subject because we get to talk about a lot of things that are important in the world today and some of their origins. Um, and then we wanted to expand our offerings in social science, and so I suggested psychology, which morphed into AP psychology, and uh, both classes uh, get to uh, give the students an opportunity to do a lot of reflection on themselves and their world, whether in psychology it's their social world or in history it's just the world around them. So um, the classes go very well together and I enjoy both of them. With so much going on in the world today with world events, um, mm -hmm. it must be so fascinating to be able to tie in what's going on currently with yeah. past history and see how everything is still connected. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it lends to a lot of debate as well because mm. the, um, a lot of the things in history, well, one of the main things I want to get through to the students is that history is not something that's purely objective and you, know, you read it in a history book and that's what happened, but we get to decide what our history is and how to interpret it and how to analyze it. And historians are just detectives that are putting together mm -hmm. a story um, by looking at primary sources. And uh, so that is a really important lesson for our students. And we can use world events going on today to kind of springboard off of that. And, and the students can see that even the events going on today have a wide variety of responses to them. Do you find it difficult to, to get kids interested in history? Um, you know, whenever I tell someone I'm a history teacher, I get one of two responses, either, oh, that's great, or, um, oh, history, <laughs> yeah, you know, kind of a fake smile, and that's great. Um, and for the students, it's, it's the same. A lot of them love history, a lot of them don't. Um, but history, I mean, teaching world history, that's, that's a huge scope. So there are events and perspectives for all of my students to get interested in. They'll find some sort of niche um, throughout the course of the year that they can connect to. There's so much content that's available to us now. Mm -hmm. And so we're absorbing all of this world information. You know, several generations ago, that wasn't the case. Yeah. So you know, how do you see the difference between maybe how we approached learning history you know, maybe a decade ago or so, or two decades ago, before your time as a teacher, mm -hmm. but as to now, because we have a content overload. Yeah, um, there is. And I think, too, when there's so much information available on the internet, um, the students come to devalue history sometimes because they think that they can just look up whatever they want to find whenever they need it. But it's really important to teach them the skills for how to analyze what they do find um, because we have so much information at our fingertips that we have to spend extra time nowadays talking about the, the skills of figuring out what is a trustworthy source in context, in the context of what you're trying to discover, um, and also avoiding plagiarism and, and all of those those issues. Well, the digital yeah. literacy of knowing yeah. what's an accurate Absolutely. source and, and, and what Absolutely. isn't. Absolutely, so, yeah. So that's kind of a challenge in a way because a lot of students might look at something and say, well, it says right here that this happened. Yeah. Well, what's the source? Yeah, exactly. You know, that's a blog which <laughs> yeah. may or may not be trustworthy, and so uh, we have to especially teach um, those analytical skills. So now I understand that in your class you say everyone has a voice. Absolutely. What does that mean? Absolutely. Well, I think it's really important to listen to what is going on with the students. Um, at my school and at my charter district, uh, we have a program called Capturing Kids Hearts. And we, 
engage the students. We shake their hands as they come in the classroom and see what's going on with them. We start every class by talking about good things that are going on in their lives. And, you know, teaching is just a connection between teachers and students. And so it's really important to see how students respond to different things and listen to their voice that sometimes they can, sometimes they'll tell you flat out, I don't want to do this, I don't like this, or that sort of thing. But they're also subtle clues and they're also, um, they have some, some great suggestions for um, learning if I tell them, okay, this is our objective, this is what I want to do. And sometimes a student will say, well, let's just do it this way. And like, okay, that's great. We're, mm -hmm. we're meeting our objective, and so let's try something different. So I think it's really important to listen to um, the students and um, things about them, but also to include them in the learning process for objectives and activities and to see what fits them well. So when you're teaching them you know, world history and their place in the world, uh, what do you teach them about being good citizens in the world? Because that's all part mm. of it. Yes, absolutely. Um, part of the Capturing Kids Hearts also we have a social contract for each class, uh, which ties in so well with my world history classes because we actually talk about the social contract and theoretical government mm. um, topics. Um, but we talk about the different um, aspects of being a good citizen and we want to treat each other respectfully and with compassion and uh, with encouragement and all of these things. And that lesson is more important than anything I could teach them about World War I battles. That is um, the most important thing to reflect on and to learn. And what are they learning about being a good citizen? What, what, what is it that you, that you teach them? I think um, responsibility is a big thing, being responsible for your actions. Um, you know, I, I tell them we're not perfect and part of learning is falling down and making mistakes and so when I make a mistake in the classroom I apologize to my students and we have conversations about those things and if they make a mistake or um, make a mistake in giving an incorrect answer or even if they have a lapse of character and they do something they shouldn't do um, they need to take responsibility, um, just as I and other citizens in the world, um, hopefully, uh, take responsibility for our actions and things that, that we do. Um, it's about integrity, and um, that's the most important thing about being a good citizen. Um, and also being there for the community and helping each other out. I'm the advisor for the National Honor Society, and we do a lot with community service. and. Uh, helping out others in our community because we have a responsibility to help others as well. And involvement in community service teaches good citizenship. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So it's, it's a lesson all the way around. Yep. So, so how long have you been a teacher? I've taught nine years and I'm going into my tenth year. Mm. So what was it that made you become a teacher? Well, uh, first of all, my parents, of course. <laughs> um, but I went away to college and I was incredibly blessed to have um, the opportunity to um, study at a top university and travel around Europe and it, it was an amazing blessing and I wanted to give back to the community and to show my students the same thing that my parents showed me, that they can do whatever it is that they want to do. Mm -hmm. um, and also those students that want to pursue the university route, I want to help them um, get the skills they need to, to pursue that. And the students that want to go in different paths, I want to help them as well to, to do it at whatever it is that they want to do. Well, congratulations to you. We appreciate you. your time. We've been speaking with Crystal and Buddha who is the Teacher of the Year for the California Charter School Association and she teaches at Futures High School. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me.